All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, thank you for being with us today. Yeah. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. Thank you for healing those, Lord, that we lifted up today. The breads for the children, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your love for us, Lord. You are Boaz. Father, you're our Savior, our Redeemer, our Healer, our Restorer. Father, our Lover, the Repairer of the Breach, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, uh, thank you for being with us today and helping us. Lord, thank you for... Uh, just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I, I'm, uh, I got a little, uh, forward, a little forward in here. I'm going to read, and then um, we'll uh, get into this. You guys ready? Um, on a board back behind me, uh, I wrote the book of Ruth. Kind of gave the names and what the... Uh, um, their names mean and we'll kind of get into it a little bit um, but uh, I wanted to write at the bottom uh, let me write that at the bottom before we get started um, the question that I felt like God wanted me to ask you guys you know a question have you found your Boaz. That's the question. Have you found your Boaz? I found my Boaz. You know, and I know a lot of you have too. You know, um, and I can't wait till, he, till I get to meet him. And I'm in his field. Right. And I ain't working in nobody else's field, you know. I'm excited about it as well. And, uh, and believe me, you don't want to get caught in nobody else's field. <laughs> because, you know, they take notice if you're, you know, in somebody else's field. Which we're going to see. Alright, thank you, Father. Man, I'm just like, wow, thank you, Father. Alright, let's get started. Ruth is a cameo story of love devotion and redemption set in a black context of the days of the judges now the days of the judges this was before the kings came okay before there was any king king saul was the first king so there was no kings at this time god reigned through the judges he used the judges to judge the uh the children of israel okay okay good deal is it a, it's a story of a Moabite woman who forsakes her pagan heritage in order to cling to the people of Israel and to the God of Israel. Because of her faithfulness in a time of national faithlessness, God rewards her by giving her a new husband, Boaz, and a son, Obed in a privileged position in the lineage of David and Christ. She is the great grandmother of David. So this time, I mean, just look at the setting that she's in right now. Um, because of her faithfulness in a time of national faithlessness, you know, man, is that not the time we're in right now? I mean, they just passed last Friday, I think it was, by executive order. They just passed, you know, they removed one nation under God. They removed the God out of it. Yeah, last week. So, and they had a, uh, yeah, they had an LBN, LBTY, LB gender. Uh, yeah, LBGT actually say the anthem without saying uh, God in it. Yeah. They removed it, yes. That's right. So it's no longer, and uh, they officially removed it. So, you know, it's where we at, and we know it. You know, it's not a shock to us. The Bible said it was coming. Because of her faithfulness in a time of national faithlessness, um, God rewards her by giving her a new husband, Boaz. 
the son of Obed, I mean, uh, gives our new husband, Boaz, and a son, Obed, in a privileged position, position in the lineage of David and Christ. She is the great-grandmother of David. This is a Moabite. Now, if you know anything about the Moabites, remember when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that was the end time, Lot and his daughters came out, right? You know, his wife turned to a pillar of salt, right? They thought there was five cities destroyed on the, on the plain there with Sodom and Gomorrah and three other cities. They thought the end of the world had happened. There was a picture of what's going to happen in the end, but they thought it was the end. They thought all men and everything was dead, so they got their father drunk and they slept with their father, each one of them, and that's where the Moabite seed came from. They went to a little place called Zoar, Z-O-A-R, which means little. It was in a little place called Zoar, and you know that's where the Moabite race come from. So through. This is where, through incest, is where actually Ruth came from. She, her name, Moabite, means seed. Moab means seed. So she was, you know, which is kind of crazy. And she becomes the great-grandmother of King David, which is amazing. Which is, you know, so... God's amazing. You know, we get these we get these women, we see these women, you know, that God uses, you know, like Rahab the harlot, you know, um, who is actually the mother of Boaz. Wow. You know, it's amazing. You know, amazing how God is. And uh, amazing. Let's keep reading. All right. Um, Let's see. Ruth divides nearly into four uh, distinct settings. The country of Moab, a field in Bethlehem, the threshing floor in Bethlehem, and the city of Bethlehem. The setting of the first 18 verses is Moab, a region northeast of the Dead Sea. The Moabites, descendants of Lot, worship uh, Hamash, Hamash and other pagan gods. Scriptures records two times when they fight against Israel. Can you turn, I, get it, I'm getting an echo behind me. I'm hearing like a reverb, an echo. Do you guys hear it or no? You hear it? All right. Uh, Ruth takes place about two centuries after the first war and about uh, 80 years before uh, uh, the record. Ruth 1.1 gives the setting of the remainder of the book. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. This is a time of apostasy and warfare and decline and violence and moral decay and anarchy. Ruth provides a capital of the other side of the story. Do you need it today? Do you need to turn the mics off or something back here? I think so. No, it, it's interference. It's all up there. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. The godly rem... Okay, uh, let me go back. This is a time of apostasy, warfare, decline, violence, moral decay, and anarchy. Ruth provides a cameo of the other side of the story. The godly remnant who remain true to the laws of God. So man, this is exactly where we're at today. I mean, this, it is, when I tell you it is crazy out there right now, oh, yeah. it is absolutely crazy. I mean, wow. Because Ruth is written more to tell a beautiful story than to give all the historical facts of that period, the assignment of the time is somewhat difficult. Utilizing the same fourfold division noted above, the following can be assigned. Um, so they, uh, the country of Moab, they're there about 10 years. Um, they're in a field in Bethlehem, which is about a couple of months. Um, the threshing floor in Bethlehem is one day. And the city of Bethlehem, where we're going to see the marriage take place, is about one year. So it's only, uh, I think, four chapters, huh? Yeah. Yep. Four chapters long. So um, let's see. Um, uh, Christ in the book of Ruth, we see the concept of the kinsman's redeemer or 
uh, they, it's called the Goel, which means the kinsman's redeemer or near kinsman, is an important portrayal of the work of Christ. Um, let's see. Uh, the Goel, number one, must be related by blood to those who redeems. Um, number two, he must be able to pay the price of redemption. Number three, uh, he, uh, he must be willing to redeem. And number four, he must be free himself. Christ was free from the curse of sin, and the word goel, G-O-E-L, used 13 times in this short book, uh, presents a clear picture of the mediating work of Christ. Um, the Hebrew word for kinsman is the word goel. So Christ, we, we're going to run across this word goel, it means kinsman. So that's basically, I'm, that's why I'm telling you, because you're going to run across it. Let's see. Um, uh, what else do you really need to see in here? All right, um, some key verses in it is uh, Ruth 1.16 and uh, chapter 3, verse 11. It says, And Ruth said, And treat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodge, lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. I mean, that is a lot of things in which, you know, happens with us today. You know, when we leave to serve Christ, our Boaz, you know, you're going to find you have to walk away from family. You have to, you know, because... You're going to find family is going to reject you quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, yeah. You know, and you're going to battle. I mean, my wife just went through something, you know, a few days ago. You know, and I, I just heard another brother telling me a couple of days ago he was going through something with family, you know. And when you make a, 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 a true stand Amen. for Come Jesus on. Christ, yeah. um, you know, you need, you're going to find that you're going to go through these things. But and you have to have the mentality of Ruth. That's the mentality that, you know, I'll, I'm going to go where you go. Your people is going to be my people. You know, that means the people that are around you that, that are sitting down right here, you know, you're, you, you are my people. You know that? Yeah. In my immediate family that hasn't received Jesus Christ and don't want no part of Him, well then, you know, I have to forsake them right. for you. Yeah. I love them. It's a shame. But, you know, and when I say forsake them, you know, she forsook her culture, right. That's right. her people, and left. Amen. Their practices, the language, and everything that was going on for, you know, what was, you know, oh, you, oh, you mean, you mean to tell me that you're going to, you know, you're going to pick up your, your stuff and, and move and go, you know, with these people over here? What about your family? What about your brothers and sisters? You're just going to, I mean, that's what we would deal with right now. Amen. And that's what we do deal with right now. But what's more important to you? You know, them or us. Right. And they'll cut, and, and let me tell you something. You're going to find out it's not you cutting them off. They're going to cut you off. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. it. Because you can still have a relationship with them and love them. But they're going to separate themselves from you. That's right. right. Yeah. You know? And then you're going to find that they strike out against you every time they're around you. Yes. Right. You know? Right. And it's not you. You really, because they just, they can't see. You know? They don't Amen. know. They don't understand. But you have to remain in love. That's yeah. right. You have to remain in love. And, you know, you're not forsaking them for others. You're forsaking them for Jesus Christ. That's right. You're leaving them, 
you know, for what Jesus Christ has called you to do, you know, and what He's called you to be, you know, and what do you mean you can't come to my party? Yeah. You know, or... Amen. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, you know. There's things that if you are going to truly be a testimony for Jesus Christ, you know, you can't, you can't be in both fields. Right. You're going to see that in this book. You can't be in both fields. Because if you're working in both fields, man, the kinsman's redeemer ain't going to have no part of you. That's right. You know, I was talking to my mom about that yesterday. You know, let's keep going. You guys understand. You've all been there. Let's see. And, um, and now my daughter, she says, Naomi says, Fear not, I will do to, you, to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. This is in chapter 3, verse 11. This is the kinsman's redeemer. When, she, when Ruth came to, to Boaz on the threshing floor and, you know, went to his feet and asked that he would take his skirt, his, you know, and cover her with it. Listen to what he says to her, you know. He says, And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. She wants to be married. She's looking for a covering. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. What does virtuous mean? Pure. Pure. Pure in heart. Is that what it means? Virtuous mean. She was in right standing. I'm sure. I didn't. I didn't look it up, but you know, it's something we can check out. Uh, another key chapter is Ruth chapter four. In uh, in 22 short verse, verses, Ruth moves from widowhood and poverty to marriage and wealth. In exercising the law, regulating the redemption of property, uh, and the law concerning a brother's duty to raise up seed children in the name of the deceased, Boaz brings a Moabite woman, woman into the family line of David and eventually of Jesus Christ. And uh, here is the survey of it. Ruth is a story of a virtuous woman who lives above the norm of her day. Although it was probably written during the time of David, the events take place during the time of the judges. This period in Israel's history was generally a desert of rebellion and immor immorality. But this uh, story of Ruth stands in contrast as an oasis of integrity and righteousness. Ruth is a virtuous woman who shows loyal love to her mother-in-law Naomi and her near kinsman Boaz. In both relationships, goodness and love are clearly manifested. Her love is demonstrated in chapters 1 and 2 and rewarded in chapters 3 and 4. So while we read this, this Ruth is, you know, symbolically speaking, who we're supposed to be. We're to line our life up to Ruth. Yes. It says, a righteous, good, pure, saintly, angelic, moral, ethic, upright standing, high-minded principles, um, example of Mary. That's it. So that's pretty, you know, so that's what God has called us to be. Righteous, virtuous, holy, you know, high-minded, moral, just. That's what God has called us to be. That's what you know, he, he actually makes us into, right. you know, through His Spirit. It says, uh, Ruth's love is demonstrated in chapters 1 and 2. 
The story begins with a famine in Israel, a sign of disobedience and apostasy. Now, man, I can kick some stuff in right there in a big way. The Bible says in every place uh, the Bible talks about the Lord's return, there's always a great famine. Yes. Every place the Bible talks about, you know, Elijah must come before the great notable day of the Lord's return. When Elijah came, there was a great famine. You know, when we go through, when Jesus talked about there shall be famines and earthquakes, you remember in Matthew chapter 24? What does that mean? You know, that means right before the Lord returns, we can expect a great famine. That's right. In fact, right now, you know, there's a famine of the truth in God's Word. Amen. There's a spiritual famine from the truth that's being, you know, ministered, you know, from the pulpit. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest famine. Yeah. But there's a physical famine that's coming as well. Yeah. That's right. There's a food famine coming as well. Yeah. Amen. Let's see. All right. So, um... So the story begins with the famine in Israel, a sign of disobedience and apostasy. That's what it talks about in Deuteronomy 28 through 30. If you do this, I will do this. If you don't do this, then, you know, this is going to happen. Also, it talks about it in Zechariah. It talks about, you know, that uh, in Zechariah chapter 14, that... Uh, and Ezekiel uh, chapter 47 that if you know they don't come and pay homage to the Lord when he returns that he's not going to rain on their land no rain you know no crops there's going to be famine and you know the stuff that's going on right now in Venezuela I mean it is they're crossing over the border looking for food one of the most sought after things right now in Venezuela besides food is toiletries and soap Wow. Yeah. Put that on your list. Toiletries and soap. There's no sugar either. Right. So, uh, let's see. Um, so the story begins with a famine uh, in Israel, a sign of disobedience and apostasy. Uh, an Israelite named, uh, Israelite named Amlek, his name means my God is king, it's on a board, uh, in desperate act moves from Bethlehem, House of bread, that's what it means. Note the irony. To Moab. So he leaves the place of the house of bread to Moab, which means seed. Although he seeks life in that land, he and his two sons, Melhalon, which means sick, and uh, Halion, CH means huh, uh, which means penning, they find only death. Uh, the deceased sons leave two Moabite widows, Orpah, stubbornness, and Ruth, friendship. Emlech's widow, Naomi, hears that the famine in Israel is over and decides to return, no longer as Naomi, which means pleasant, but as Merah, which means bitter. And we're really going to open this stuff up. I mean, it's really going to be really good. Um, she tells her daughter-in-law to remain in Moab and remarry since there was no security for an unmarried woman in those days. Orpah chooses to leave Naomi and is never mentioned again. Now I'll give you a little side note about Orpah. Um, um, through uh, some Jewish teachings, um, Orpah is believed to had married a Philistine and was actually the mother of Goliath. Who was that? Orpah was the mother of Goliath that David killed. Ah, yeah, that's in Jewish teachings. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Um, that's in some uh, Jewish teachings. I did a, a study a while back, and that's who she went and married into the Philistine community. But anyway, uh, Orpah chooses to leave Naomi and is never mentioned again. Ruth, on the other hand, resolves to cling to Naomi and follow Yahweh the God of Israel. She therefore gives up her culture. So this is what God is calling you to do. Give up your culture. Right? You have to give up your Western, your traditions, your culture. Right? Wow. Are you serious? 
Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, she is therefore gives up her culture, her people, and language becomes uh, and language becomes of her love. Let me read it again. She therefore gives up her culture, people, and language becomes oh because of her love. I'm sorry. So she gives up her culture, people, and language because of her love. So she actually even learned the Hebraic language. Yeah. So she stopped talking like a Moabite. Wow. That's amazing. Just like we do now, right? Yes. Well, that's what happens um, when we become saved. The dead becomes alive. That's right. And you're not what you used to be. And that's what happens when you go to another country. You have to give up your citizenship from there. And That's exactly right. Same thing That's a good analogy. A woman when she gets married to a man. That's right. She takes his name and adapts herself to him. That's right. And that's the importance of knowing the Hebrew customs and going back and studying the feast and the festivals and Amen. And you know, and in fact we call it feast and festivals, but the better uh, to better understand or a better word for it is actually appointments. These are God's, not feasts and festivals, although they call that, these are God's appointed times. That's right. So that we can understand how God moves and operates, right? Naomi's misfortune leads her to think that God is her enemy, right? Wow. Naomi's misfortune she loses her husband and her two sons. Right? But he has plans she does not yet realize. So she represents the Jewish people. In her plight, she must let Ruth glean at the edge of the field, of a field. In her plight, she must let Ruth glean at the edge of a field. So, you know, she's got to let Ruth go because she don't have no covering anymore. She don't have any covering. Her husband died. She's coming back, you know. Her land's already been taken and gone. Her husband left it. It's gone. So she's got to... The Gentile Moabite, I mean, the Gentile Moabite Ruth to feed her now. Wow. And she knows some kinsman's redeemer. She knows, look, go in his field. He's a near kinsman to me. And see what happens. Because she's testing the, the waters to see what's going to happen. Right? She's wanting to see what's going to happen if, you know, Ruth goes over there. Now listen to what he says next. It says, um... In her plight, she must let Ruth glean at the edge of a field. Now, they, they gleaned the edges. They wasn't allowed in the Hebrew uh, custom to glean the edge of the field, to reap the whole field. They had to leave the edges for the poor and the widow and the main and the orphan. They left that edge around it. They couldn't go into the center, you know. The, uh, they had to leave the outer edges. This is a humiliating and dangerous task because of the character of many of the reapers. Wow. wow. Biblically speaking, the reapers are the angels. Wow. With Jesus, the reapers are the angels. You don't mess with the angels. Right? Now watch. However, God's providential care brings her to the field of Boaz, Naomi's kinsman. Boaz means in him is strength. Have you found your Boaz? I found my strength. I found him. It says, uh, 
this is uh, the process where uh, love begins protection and he begins to provide for her so when we come to Christ this is where our the you know this is the process where our love begins and God you know begin his protection and he begins to provide for you and me Boaz uh, uh, Ruth's love is rewarded in chapters 3 and 4. And this is the last little bit, and we're going to probably read the first chapter. What time is it? Okay. Boaz takes no further steps toward marriage. He takes no further steps toward marriage. So Naomi follows the accepted customs of the day and requests that Boaz exercise his rights as a kinsman redeemer. In chapter 3, verse 10 through 13, Boaz reveals why he has taken no action. He is, he is older than Ruth, perhaps 20 years her senior, and he is not the nearest kinsman. Nevertheless, God rewards Ruth's devotion by giving her Boaz as a husband and by providing her with a son, Obed, the grandfather of David. Man, we in for a ride. Boaz and Ruth, um, brother and sister? Boaz is a Jew and Ruth is a Moabite who Does she have to his no relationship Boaz marries Ruth she's asking, she's asking why is he a person other than her husband Naomi. 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 Naomi Boaz was related to Naomi, Naomi. okay okay yeah so yeah, what was their relation it was related to the by marriage, uh, marriage. Yeah. okay let Okay, listen, I'm going to explain it to you. I'm a, listen, I'm going to explain it to you. Hold on. Just listen. Imlech and Boaz, remember Naomi's husband, Imlech. Right. Imlech and Boaz were near kinsmen, were like cousins. Okay. Okay? Imlech died. Right? So when Imlech and her sons died, Naomi came back from Moab and... Now, Naomi is related to Boaz by marriage through Emlech. Right. It's, it, so, you know, Boaz, but there is a nearer kinsman to Naomi than Boaz. There's another man that's closer to relationship, like a first cousin to Emlech which is Naomi's husband. So, and Boaz being like the second cousin. And we're going to get into that and show that. Got that? Yes. Okay. All right. So, is that clear? Right, because I looked it up and it said a kinsman was a close relative. Yeah, he was a close relative to Naomi. By marriage. By marriage. Like an in-law. Like an in-law. That's exactly right. And if you knew anything, you know, in Jewish customs, they had to, if, uh, you know, they had to raise up, right, they had, to, they had to raise up seed. But now Naomi's at an age that she can't, you know, she's older now, and, you know, she can't have any more kids. You know, her sons are older and died, and she has no seed. That's the problem. And she has, and you're going to find out how Ruth gives birth to a son, and Naomi actually raises raises up Ruth's son on her knee. So basically, what happens is Ruth gives Naomi her son. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Because you see, a woman back then, that was the whole thing. She wanted to be married and she wanted to have a son. Right. Most important thing. She lost her husband and she lost her sons. Y'all with me? Are y'all with me on that? 
Does anybody, am I missing something? No, we just got to We got an update from Dad. That's all. Is okay? Um, go ahead. He pulled out his, let's say, little Debbie text last night with Rob. He wanted everything off and out, and he started acting weird. Um, he pulled out his pick one, his ID, and um, they did a repeat CT, and he has more fluid. The ventricles are larger in the brain, in the brain so there's more fluid, so they're going to keep monitoring him. They any nausea. Or, yeah, they may have to put in the, um, the shock for the drain. Okay. So, more fluid than before. Than before. No, he's not with artists. They're going to watch for oh, lethargy and nausea and vomiting. Keep um, it up. He did eat. He said they ate about that he ate five um, five mouths of grits and one piece of bacon and said it was disgusting. Um, but he's resting right now, so hopefully he doesn't throw up his food. And okay, I'm glad we prayed yeah. and we claimed his life for Jesus Christ. So, yes. so. Uh, but that, she missed a call from Tina, so that's what we were trying to do. Okay, that's no problem. Sorry. Let's get let's read this one. I want to read this one chapter to you guys, and we're gonna have the next three. All right. So, uh, any questions you got, um, uh, save them for next week um, because I really got some stuff I got to do. And uh, not rushing you, but you know, I really have some stuff I got to go do. I love you guys. And I'm excited about it. You know, God's amazing. You ready? So, let's go. Right, now, it came to pass. Uh, it, this is Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Now, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Now, what I might do when I come through this, um, I'm going to break this way down. Way, way down. Um, so, if I don't break it down as much as I want today, I'm going to break it down a whole lot next week, okay? Um, now, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, notice that's, you know, where Christ was born in Bethlehem. So I want you to notice the comparisons, Boaz and all of this stuff, you know, this is all going to be about Jesus Christ as well, because this is what it's really all about. Um, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem... Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in a country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons, and the name of the man was Emlech, which means my God is king. And the name of his wife is Naomi, which means pleasant. And the name of his two sons, which is Malhon, which is sickness, and Chilhon, which means, or Halon, Halion, which means penning. Um, uh, of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Emlech, Naomi's husband, Naomi means pleasant or my delight, uh, and Emlech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the, woman, uh, of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, which means stubbornness, and the name of the other was Ruth, which means uh, female companion or friendship. Um, and they dwelled there for about ten years. Um, which is really odd, you know, sticking out, is that these guys, being Jews, is a no-no for them to marry Gentiles. That's, the, you know, number one. They should have, you know, that's a no-no. Um, and Mahalon uh, and uh, Holion died also, both of them, and the woman uh, was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited her people in giving them bread. Uh, wherefore, uh, she went forth out of that place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return into the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughter-in-laws, Go, return each to uh, her mother's house, the Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of your husband. Man, that ye may find rest. See? That's what we're all looking for. We're looking for rest, right? Yes. That rest is Sabbath. Yes. Hey, uh, that's Sabbath. Yes. 
That's what she's looking for. Marriage. That chapter, uh, verse 9. The Lord grant you that ye uh, may find Sabbath, each of you in the house of your husband, that she kissed them. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Right? So here they both saying, We're going to come with you. Right? And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. So this is why she can't get remarried. So she's too old. Right? If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having uh, would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters. For it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, and Ruth clave unto her. Right? Now, one kissed, right, and went away, and the other clinged. And you find out that um, Ruth was married to Halion, C-H-I-L-O-N, would say it, you know, Chilion or Chilion. So Ruth, the female companion who clung to Orpah, to cling, she pinned herself to, Ruth was married here. Boaz, I mean uh, Orpah, who was stubborn, right? She was married to the one that was sick. So she didn't have anything, you know, mouth, but there was nothing inside of her, you know, to make her hold on. So anyway, let's see. Uh, what verse we in? 15. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is going back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, And treat me not to leave thee. Now I want to show you something right there. This woman left her gods and her people and were living with Jews now. So she left her gods. She was following the Jewish customs now. She left the Jewish customs and Yahweh and went back to her false gods. Right? right? And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee from uh, thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Meaning, she saw that she had a made up mind and she was going with her. That all of these qualities that are in Ruth needs to be in us. That needs to be in you and me. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, which means heaven's oven or the house of bread. I don't know if you knew that. Wow. Orpha also reminds me of, you said she kissed her and then left. I might as well do this. That's, a, that's exactly what I thought when, you know, the kiss. Kissed kiss and then left. Right. That's a, with Jesus like them, but then he betrayed them. That's exactly right. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? Is this my delight? That's her name. Now, I'm going to show you something about Naomi. Naomi represents the law of God. Okay? She represents the law. She represents the Jewish people. They receive the law. 
right? This goes back to, I was talking to Brother George. Um, he had called me up and we was talking one day about, you know, uh, how you eat something and it's sweet in your mouth, right? Delightful and tasteful, but bitter in your stomach, right? Here it is again. This is what it means right here. Now watch what she says. She says, uh, So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, that this, all the city was about them, and they said, Is this Naomi my delight or pleasant? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Merah. Call me bitter. So she went from the Word of God is sweet in our mouth. When they received the law of God, you know, that's what they wanted. Yes, give us your commandments. Give us your law. And when the law came forth, they was excited. They was happy. They was, oh, it's, oh, yes. Mm, mm, they, it was so good. And then when they digested it, 613 laws, yeah. they were like, we can't keep this. Really? It was bitter. Amen. Yeah. It became bitterness to him. Wow. Right? Eat the book. Remember in Revelations? Take the book and eat it. John on the island. It's going to be sweet in your mouth, but it's going to be bitter in your stomach. Right. Out of the mouth of the eater, the lion, came sweetness. Right? Remember? Be sweet in your mouth and bitter in your stomach. Because no one in the flesh can keep the law. Right. That's what's bitter about it. The Word of God is good. It's, and it's holy. And it's precious. Amen. But in the flesh, we can't keep it. Only one man could. So, And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Merah. For the Almighty hath de has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi pleasant, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? Now why? Why, you know... Man, if you go back to the very beginning, you're going to find out that they're serving false gods. You're going to, saw, you're going to find out that the land, they had departed from God. Yeah. That's why all of these things had come upon them. That's why they died. Right? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitist, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, Watch this. Very important. In the beginning of the barley harvest. So now, if you guys don't get this right, I'm going to kick you in your butts. <laughs> I mean it. Because you've been with me a long time. When is the beginning of the barley harvest? <laughs> No. When is the beginning of the barley harvest? I didn't say the wheat harvest. We just went over this. When did Jesus rise from the dead? Passover. Passover, yeah. No, he didn't. The feast of first fruits. He was the feast, he was the resurrection, right? On the seventeenth day, the feast of first fruits began, that was the, the seventeenth day of Nisan, was the first day of the counting of the Omer, 49 days, the barley harvest. For 49 days, they were reaping, gathering in the barley harvest. Naomi had heard there was food in Bethlehem. They get there when they're reaping in the harvest, the barley harvest. Very important. You're going to see why it's important to know these things, to know their customs, and what's happening because it's all going to tie into the marriage and what's happening and what's going on. And we'll get into more stuff later. 
next Saturday we'll get into chapter two and uh, and really get into some good stuff. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, thank you for your presence. Lord, thank you for just being with us today. Lord, for coming and just encouraging us, Lord, and and uh, just showing up, Father. Lord, I ask that you, Lord, just be with everybody today. Lord, encourage them. Strengthen them, Lord, as they go forth, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen.